In this video, I'm going to show you what can go wrong in the opening at the highest level. That's something you don't see very often, but it happened even in the World Cup. That's something very unusual and I really like to show you what uh, happened in the game between Vallejo Pons from Spain against Andrei AC Penko from Russia. And this is something very unusual, so let's have a look what happened there. But before I'm going to show you, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like. I need your support even more to let the channel grow. In the game, Vallejo played here to move 1 e4 and after e5 knight f3, knight c6, we start off with the Italian opening, but after the move knight f6, white plays the move d4. It's a very open uh, setup. Uh, you're placing your pawns on e4 and d4, aiming for quick development. And after e takes d4, we are actually in the scorch gambit. It's a pawn sacrifice. White is hoping to generate active peace play, uh, gain the lead in development. And after this capture, play the move e5. This is the main continuation. You're attacking the knight on f6. So you would expect the knight to go away. Uh, and that happened in the game. But I should also point out that the counterattack with d5, so that in case of e takes f6, you can capture the bishop. It's also a very important move. It's still the main line. And the idea is that if white is going to move the bishop, you are able to install your knight in the center on e4, and that pawn on d5 nicely supports the, the knight on, on e4. So that is interesting the uh, theory. Uh, knight e4 was played immediately, and this is actually quite a popular move nowadays, but at this point the knight is still less stable, because white is going to attack it with the move queen to e2. And now the difference is that if you would play here the move d5, there's no need to move your bishop, but instead you can take en passant. And if black is going to recapture, you understand that the knight on e4 is hanging. Knight takes d6 is not a possibility at this point because the queen is pinning the knight. So this is a little tricky still, but after the move queen to e2, black instead played here the move knight c5. That is a reasonable move. Uh, the knight is temporarily blocking the bishop from getting to a more active square, but very soon the knight can land on e6 so that the bishop on c4 doesn't exert as much pressure as it does now against the pawn on uh, f7. White played here the move c3. So this is going to be a real gambit with the idea that if you do take, you're going to recapture with the knight and white is a pawn down, but has fantastic peace play. You can get the uh, knight out to c3, you will castle, get your bishop to g5. When the pawn on d4 is no, no longer there, you can even bring your rook to the center, to d1. So for just one pawn, you get all your pieces very quickly into play. And that's how gambits should be played in general. How is black going to react? Various moves. You don't have to capture. You can say, here's my pawn. You can advance the pawn. Please take it. And uh, in that case, maybe white is not even taking the pawn yet, but uh, because this bishop is a really good piece, you don't want to trade it off for the knight uh, in general. So that's one idea. Other idea is just to go back to e6, which was AC Penko's choice. Now after c takes d4, black can still take the pawn on uh, d4. And this was actually seen in earlier games, but after knight takes d4, Knight takes d4, knight takes d4. You move the queen away because uh, your queen was hanging. You're attacking the knight. If the knight goes back, you're going to castle. And here, very similar ideas. You, you would like to get your knight out. Um, maybe you're going to even play f4, f5. Just try to uh, kick that knight out. And later on, you have really great attacking chances. Black didn't capture the pawn on d4, but instead played here to move bishop to b4. White uh, has to solve the, the check, can do it in various ways, but knight c3 is the, uh, is the obvious move. And here, interesting moment, black played here the move d5. So finally, black is striking back in the center, wanted to get rid of that backward pawn. Of course, bishop takes d5, guys, that's not good because of queen takes d5, and the knight on c3 is pinned, so therefore it can't take the, the queen in the, in the center. White should play something else, and there followed e takes d6, opening up the e file, which means that in case black does recapture with the queen, there is the move d5 and your knight is hanging because you can't move it away because of the pin. But AC Penko, probably caught by surprise, 
reacted in a very interesting manner. He thought, I don't need your pawn. Instead of playing against the initiative, I want to seize the initiative myself. And therefore, he didn't recapture, but played the move castling kingside, getting its king out of the center, mobilizing it, its knight once again. So the knight has potential ideas of taking the pawn on uh, d4. What should Y do? Should Y uh, try to support the pawn or should he take on c7? Well, in the game, the move d takes c7 was played, but maybe bishop e3 would have been a better continuation. So the idea is that um, you would like to uh, protect your pawn, you would like to castle next, and uh, okay, you're playing with an isolated pawn on d4, but your development has been completed, your rooks are connected, and in a way, the knight on e6 looks a bit strange. It's more common on the f6 square. Uh, y is guarding your king side better, and it keeps the bishop uh, the free path to, to get developed, for instance, to, uh, to g4. So I'm not a big fan of the knight on d6, on e6, sorry, in this particular position, but it didn't happen in the game. Maybe white should have... Uh, uh, continued fighting here with the move bishop e3. Instead, d takes c7 was played attacking the queen. There is the move queen takes c7. Black is a pawn down, but is threatening to take on d4. So if, if you're going to take, uh, sorry, if you're going to castle, there is knight e takes d4, and black is more than comfortable here. You can get the bishop out and, uh, and so on. Another possibility is trying to stick to the pawn one more time with the move bishop to e3, but now something like knight a5 would be an excellent idea to attack the bishop with both the queen and knight. If the bishop goes away, you got to watch out for bishop takes c3 ideas, followed by queen takes c3, when both the rook and the king will be under threat. So, not sure, maybe this is one of these options should have been considered by, uh, by white, but Vallejo thought I can protect my pawn in a different way. Let's play here the move queen to d3. Queen d3, protecting the pawn, getting out of the e-file. So if you do get a chance, I'm going to castle. Maybe I will push my pawn to d5. And the pawn is a pawn. But wait a second. AC Penko sends the opportunity. And so that he can take with the knight on d4 anyway. Incredible. What is the idea? If you take on d4, which was played in the game, there is this move knight e5 with an attack against the queen. And the bishop, so you're going to regain the material. Now you may think, okay, you can still move the queen away. But if you move the queen to e2, for instance, there is this move, not knight takes c4, because that enables white still to get its king out of the center. Black is more than fine, but a much better continuation. Instead of taking the bishop, it's bishop g4, attacking the queen. If you play the move f3, Everything is hanging. You still didn't uh, got the moment to uh, to take on uh, on c4. Now your bishop on g4 is hanging. But the key move is rook f e8. We are playing for a higher goal. That's the idea. So that after taking on g4, for instance, it's knight takes c4. Now the queen will be lost because of the pin. You cannot block with your knight on e4 because of another pin. So... Things have gone horribly wrong, starting with that move queen to d3. After knight e takes d4, knight d4 was played. But I want to show you one more line. Because if you think, I could still get my king out of the center, well then, there is this move bishop to f5. And things are looking really, really bad because the queen is under threat. You also want to keep your knight defended. If you go queen to d1, knight takes f3. If you take back with the queen, hitting the bishop on f5, there is knight d4, boom. Hitting the queen, protecting the bishop, and at the same time opening up the path for the queen to hit the bishop on c4. Queen d5, rook a d8. The queen has difficulties to keep the uh, bishop defended. If you go knight b5 looking for a counterattack, the simple solution is knight, uh, sorry, is rook takes uh, d5, knight takes c7, and rook c5, and both the Minor pieces are unprotected. Let's get back to the game. As knight takes d4, knight e5 was played. But you understand that after queen e2, bishop g4, things are getting from bad to worse. Instead, Vallejo thought, I can, have, uh, I can make a clever move. I'm going to lose my bishop, but let's take on f7. With check, you capture a pawn. 
But this is really committing suicide. This is really, uh, really dangerous because now after queen takes f7, your queen is still under threat. Also, black is about to take on f2 with the queen. But for Jacob thought, okay, I can move the queen and protect the pawn. Very sensible way of thinking, right? And if this is possible, then, uh, and you get your king out of the center on the next move, that looks playable for white. I mean, black always has the bishop pair and there's compensation. His pieces are more active. But look at the next move by AC Penko. This must have been overlooked by Vallejo. Definitely, this is not Vallejo's day. He missed here the move knight d3 check. Hitting the king, hitting the pawn on f2. And the main point, of course, is that if you take with the queen, it's queen takes f2 with check. The king can only go to d1. And now the bishop comes in with check on uh, on g4. The king can't go anywhere. If you block with your knight, knight f3, it's rook 88. It's totally crushing. With the king in the middle, white is about to lose its, uh, its queen. Instead, if you play knight c e2, hoping that you can sort of build up a uh, nice construction with your knights protecting each other. Well, you got it wrong. There is bishop takes e2. You can't take with the king, obviously. If you take with the knight, then once again, it's rook 88 with the same uh, pin we see here. And if you do instead capture with the queen, well, it's queen takes d4. If the king goes to its only square, there is rook f2 with another huge skewer. You're winning the queen. That's also not playable. In the case of bishop d2, well, simple move, rook 88. And why it doesn't have enough pieces to support the bishop on d2. So that's also losing a piece as a, as a minimum. So knight e3 is a total shocker. You can't take the knight. But if you go away with your king to f1, there's knight takes f2, hitting the rook in the corner. Uh, if the rook goes away, you have probably discovered checks, attacks, looks awful. In the game, there followed the move king d2. King is hoping to get evacuated somehow, but after knight takes f2, you're hitting the rook again. The rook goes to e1. White is hoping to consolidate its position, and it looks as if at first this may be still playable, having so many pieces close to each other, but black is really fast. Plays the bishop to g4, getting the bishop out, taking away more squares from white's pieces. White cannot do much because the king is obstructing the bishop and the bishop, if it cannot be developed, the rook on a1 remains out of play. That's the big difference between both uh, sides here. And after king to c2, rook fe8 played, attacking the queen. If the queen goes away, the rook is hanging. So the queen has only one square, queen d2, hoping to exchange pieces. That would be like a dream coming true. But here, I really like AC Penko's next move. He understands that the king is in big trouble. Play here to move bishop h5 with the plan of going bishop g6 and the king can't go anywhere. The knight covers the d3 and the d1 square. The queen covers the b3 square. Rook takes e8 played, rook takes e8. And now for instance, if you go king b1, it was not played, bishop g6, king, C, uh, king can be saved here by the move knight c2. You have knight d3. This is an Beautiful move. You're protecting the bishop. You're threatening knight e1 with a attack on this pinned knight. While after knight takes uh, b4, it's knight takes b4. This would also be checkmate on the next move. Beautiful idea. Then bishop g6 is coming. You got to find a square for your king. The queen moved away to g5. Not great at all. There is bishop to g6 anyway. Now the king can come back to d2. But do you see what is the killer move? And this move ensured that Vallejo Pons was knocked out of this tournament. It's black to play and win in one move. And there is knight e4 with a check. You're forking the queen and king. Knight on c3 is pinned. So therefore it can't take the knight on e4. This is game over. You see what happened in this game. White played the gambit. Black ignored it. Gave the pawn back even sacrificed the pawn himself, overtook the initiative and crushed the opponent in only 22 moves. I think this was a very impressive game by Black. Of course, huge mistakes by White in this game, but still very impressively played by AC Penko. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and more interesting games covered very soon as well.